Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. Hi Muriel, this is Soul by Muriel. I'm um, actually just getting off from a 12 hour shift overnight and I'm about to go to sleep. <laughs> but before I go to sleep, I just wanted to tell you guys about my shift and a couple other things in long-term care. Uh, for those who work long-term care or those possibly graduating soon who are who's thinking about going into long-term care. So yeah, y'all, last night I worked the shift. It was a 7P7A, a facility I'd never worked before. You know, I, I ain't afraid of these facilities. <laughs> In my mind, kind of, sort of, if you work one long-term care facility, you work others. Um, for those who are new here, y'all, I'm a registered nurse. Um, I prefer long-term care. I've actually done acute care, hated it. Not saying I won't do it again, but I don't see me doing it. Um, I actually, I'm did a travel contract and acute care the, tra the contract wasn't bad i wasn't miserable but i just still don't like acute care uh long-term care is is me uh one oh y'all please uh, if you found this channel and you watch the video and you think what i'm saying is interesting please like comment and subscribe i like to say that this channel is for the older nurse i am 45 years old i've been a nurse for about 22 <laughs> 2001 is when I became a nurse, so whatever that equates to, 21 years. Um, yeah, I kind of say this is for the older nurse. I see a lot of nurses in other videos in the comments saying, you know, am I too old to go back to school? Am I, you know, no, you're never too old. When I, I actually became an LPN in 20, 2000, I say 2001, <laughs> that's how I say the years, in 2001, I didn't go back for my RN until 20, I think it was 14 when I actually went back. It took me a while to complete it because I was taking all these classes for a bachelor's degree that I didn't need when I eventually got my bachelor's degree, but that's another story for another video. Anywho, yeah, I have my bachelor's degree now, but I found that I actually prefer long-term care after thinking that acute care was the shiznit and it was what I was supposed to be doing. It's, it's not, y'all. It's really not. Um, one topic I want to talk about in this video is why... <laughs> Am I the only one that like long-term care? Like, I cannot be the only person that prefer long-term care. Y'all know how stressful it is in the hospital? It's stressful. And I don't know if I just say this because I worked in a level one trauma facility, but y'all, I was stressed. I was stressed. When you hear about those nurses that are burnt out, them nurses work in the hospital. You very rarely hear a nurse say she worked in long-term care and she's burnt out. Now you may hear her say it's too many patients, this, that, and third, you know, but burnt out, I will go on record and say, I mean, you know, not trying to sound any type of way. I don't think it's long-term care nurses out there, you know, how people say deleting themselves because <laughs> they don't want to say the word. I don't think it's long-term care nurses out there doing that. And long-term care nurses ain't, we ain't out there, um, you know, taking our lives into our hands like that. Um, yeah, it ain't long-term nurses. And you know why it's not long-term nurses, y'all? Because although there is a level of stress in long-term care, it's nowhere near the level that's in acute care. And acute care, I, you just feel so boxed into me. It's like you can't go nowhere. You got to stay on that floor for 13 hours because 12 hours is not happening. 13 hours, maybe 12 and a half. But when I was working, it was like 13, 13 and a half hours. I'm on that floor. It's this, you, you know, when I'm in long-term care, y'all, I might be busy, but I get my breaks. Like, I can go sit in my car for five minutes, go back on in the building, work for maybe two hours, go sit back in the car for five minutes, take a breather. I'm um, going on my break. It's supposed to be 30 minutes, y'all. I'm taking 45 minutes if, the, you know, the floor is handled. Maybe an hour sometimes, not going to lie to you. Um, I kind of do as I do as long as my people are taken care of. Nobody's acutely ill because if they are acutely ill, like if it's something like that, they're getting sent to the hospital. I kind of, you know... You know, how many of y'all working in long-term care can honestly say y'all ain't sat at that desk and chit-chat with your coworkers for a total of maybe two hours in the shift? But then you'll, a patient will ring a bell and you'll be like, oh, I'm so tired. You just sat at the damn desk for 45 minutes and talked to a coworker. Like, and it's not even your break time. This is just downtime that you had <laughs> sitting there just chit-chatting with, especially night shift, y'all. Night shift. Come on, the, the worst thing about night shift in a long-term care facility is fighting me sleep, to be honest. Like, and I've been doing that for eight, I've been doing it for now, what, 19, 20, 19 years, long-term care. 20 years, I held more, all, just about all my career because I never even let long-term care go, even when I went to the hospital. You really got, you, 
the worst thing about night shift is fighting your sleep. That's about it. Because if you go there fully energized and ready to work, it ain't nothing to get through a night shift at a long-term care facility. I don't care what nobody's saying. I don't, I don't care if you got 20, 30 patients. Once you finish that first, if you're going 7P to 7A, once you finish that first med pass, you really got to like four hours of downtime. You don't mean you charting, but to me, that's kind of like downtime because I'm sitting my behind at the desk charting. Um, might be talking to a coworker for like an hour and a half of all of that, you know, and that's, anyway, you ain't doing that in acute care. Like them people, I mean, the doctor steady bothering you, the patient's sick, getting sicker. Um, now that family members are let back in the facility, they stay in the night, they aggravating you. When I went back to long-term care, I used to say, hell, I work harder here in this hospital than I ever did long-term care. And, and that's saying a lot to say I'm the type of nurse, even in long-term care or acute care, I'm changing briefs. I'm taking people to the bathroom. I'm doing all that. Like I do all that while I'm at work in long-term care, but I do more of it when I worked at the hospital. <laughs> and that's to say I only had six patients. I was changing more, doing more incontinent care at the hospital than I was in long-term care. But anywho, I just wanted to say, am I the only, just see, I can't be the only one out there who prefer long-term care because every video I see, you know, they talk about the monotonous of working in long-term care. It's the same thing over and over. Hell, sometimes I like that same thing. I like to come in and know my patients. Um, I don't have to stay in the room with one patient for three to four hours because they're crashing and there's not a bed available in another unit to transfer them to. So I got to devote three hours of my shift to this one patient just to try to keep them alive, <laughs> keep their blood pressure down, keep, you know, keep things going just so I can, just until we can transfer them to another floor. Meanwhile, my other five patients are being neglected. If a patient starts crashing in a nursing home, hey, doctor, so-and-so, so-and-so, so can I send her out to the ER for evaluation? It's all handled within a matter of like 45 minutes. I wanted to talk about my shift last night. This is the type of stuff I run into, and I'm so used to it. I ran into this um, even before I became an agency nurse. So I worked the facility last night, first time working for the facility, ended up on a rehab hall, cool. I only had 14 patients. 14 patients on rehab, y'all know it can be feel like 25 because you know they ringing all night long, going back and forth to the bathroom. It was a hall, the whole hall had 24 and my the other nurse had 10, I had 14. Um, no problem, one CNA, but of course we only, we got a little bit of patients and we gonna be up helping. So I'm still up taking people to the bathroom stuff. So. Anywho, around two, three o'clock in the morning, the, the tech tells me, tech tells me such and such around two, now probably about 2.30, three o'clock in the morning, the tech tells me such and such has diarrhea. She's had it now for like three days, but now she's vomiting. She just like projectile, the, the tech didn't say projectile, but she was like, she just in the vomit. And I was like, oh, that sounded like projectile vomit. And so I go and look at the patient, um, patient learn oriented. So she, I look at the vomit in the base and it looked, I ain't gonna lie to y'all just like be stew to me. I could see the potatoes, carrots, all that in the pan, but it was dark brown. That could have been the gravy from the beef stew or whatever. But the diarrhea for three, y'all, I just kind of run into shifts like that quite often. And it, it gets annoying. Um, Sometimes it's so hard being that nurse that just notice every little thing. And I know it's a good trait to have, but damn, it made me side out the rest of these nurses. Like, damn, ain't no way. Like, you a whole RN. Like, not not even say she an RN and she should have seen this or should have addressed this. You know, LPN, y'all the nurse. Why y'all ain't address this? Like, why y'all ain't even get the y'all ain't even get the woman a water for any emodium or nothing? Like, just letting her have diarrhea for three days straight. You know how. Anywho, um, and that brings me around to something else I wanted to talk to. I worked another shift at another facility, like the Saturday, Saturday, Saturday. Yeah. And I went in there and people were out of narcotics. People were, um, just out of medications. Like one thing about me, when I go in a facility and a patient is out of a medication, I don't fax the order. I don't fax at the pharmacy for a refill. Like I'll go do my first, first morning med pass and I'll write down every medication that the patient is out. Like I have their list and next to their name, I'll put whatever medication they were out of. And once I finish my morning med pass, I call the pharmacy because sometimes you can fax it over the pharmacy, but it's a reason why they don't have that med and you never get it. And then it's on to the next nurse and it's not there and she may fax it again and it never come. Then the next nurse fax like it. Sometimes there's a reason why they don't send a medication. And so I call so they can tell me the reason why I'm on the phone. So if I call and you know, like there's been a time or two where a patient had, didn't have a medication come to find out the medication was on back order. No one ever took it off the mar. We just keep putting not available, not available. So 
somebody needs to um, get an order from the doctor to say to get one available or either switch that medication to something else that is available. Um, like little things like that. I just be like, hey, hi, nobody. Went there and this patient, Lord, this patient, call, you know, he a mess. The patient didn't have one of his anti-anxiety meds. Okay. He said he already, he told, he already told me he, he know his medication. So when he didn't see that pill in there, he already told me he going to, he, he was like, well, I guess y'all gonna have to deal with me <laughs> the rest of the day because I know I'm going to be over the top. And I was like, dang. <laughs> so um, I come in on a Saturday morning, the medication not in there. So obviously it ran out the night before it or whatever. And whenever it ran out, why nobody get a script for this? Why whoever would pull the next to the last pill, the last pill? They probably wrote it on a sheet of paper <laughs> for a refill. Y'all, y'all should know by now that those who've been in nursing for a little while, y'all should know by now when a narcotic is out, don't just write it on the refill sheet. Because for one, they might need a script. Call the pharmacy. Hey, so-and-so is out of there, such and such. The pharmacy will tell you we need a script. So this particular person, I um, you know, that morning when I called the rest of my meds in, I asked about that medication. Um, they said that they needed a script. So... I called the doctor on call, on call, fax the scripts to the place. The pharmacy um, was delivering that medication that night. Hold on, y'all. <laughs> y'all, the funniest thing, that was a phone call from the patient I was talking about earlier. Um, that was the patient's family member. I actually called them to inform them about their patient condition off my personal phone because when I'm down the hall working, I'm not running down the hall to get this, the job phone to make these phone calls. I, I called them right off my phone, so... <laughs> He called back. He didn't remember the number. He thought it was, you know, he didn't know who it was. And he got a little flippy with me on the phone. He was like, well, I'm calling all these numbers. And um, some of them are bogus numbers. And I guess yours is too. And I said, is this Mr. You know, he was like, yes. I said, yes, this is a nurse that called you <laughs> about your wife. He was like, oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. But anyway, um, so yeah, then he carried, tried, you know, he carried on a conversation. Lord. Anywho. Yeah, so I just, I, I I don't know. So what I'm going to do, oh, yeah, y'all, if y'all enjoy this video, <laughs> I'm sleepy, so it might be dragging. Like, comment, and subscribe. I think my next video, I, I you know, I was trying to get some new ideas, and I'm going to do a little quiz for y'all. This has nothing to do with nursing school. This is going to be about the real, real working in long-term care to give you some narr some scenarios um, about things you should do when you run into a situation that you are bound to run across in long-term care. And I just want y'all to just put in the comment section what y'all would do in that situation. Of course, I'm going to tell you, you know, how to handle the situations in the video, but I just want you to, you know, give me your suggestion on how you would handle it. Then I'm going to tell you how you should handle it because I actually, once I finished that shift, I put out so many small fires, y'all. Um, I put out so many small fires that the person that relieved me, okay, when I came in, I relieved this guy. He came back to relieve me, and once I told, gave him a rundown of things that I handled on the shift, he was like, wow, you are an awesome nurse. Can you come staff here? We need nurses like you. He said, I could tell when I walked down the hall that you was an awesome nurse. He said, because normally these patients be hollering and screaming and jumping. He said, but everybody's so calm. He said, I can tell you gave your medications. I said, oh yeah, they're going to get that medicine. I hook a crook. They're going to get their medicine if they need it. Because I, I had some incidences with the people who shouldn't have been taking the medicine. Like you got people who have run, been running hypotensive for weeks. Why are they still on two blood pressure medications with no parameters? So that's something else. Like I'm, I'm just going to give y'all some solutions to do some things to try to make y'all like out the gate coming out of school or if you're new to nursing and long-term care just so y'all could just be thorough like that when it comes to certain things because it took me years to build this up I didn't learn this overnight but I'm gonna tell you some things that'll help you out in a jam because I had to make some mistakes in order to um get to be the type of nurse I am and I'm gonna say long-term care and and in acute care but long-term care is my jam y'all and I have um I'm going to just tell you some things <laughs> to help you out so that you can skip the learning process and just say you got it from Muriel. Like, this is what Muriel said to do in this situation. I'm going to go ahead and do it. And just things that can get done in like five minutes that, you know, instead of complaining about this, you know, just something you could do just five minutes to handle the situation. Even though a lot of people are agency now, if you happen to take a staff job, you could come in and work your car because you know everything is on your card. Everything is handled. It's going to be a smooth day. I'm searching for medication. Like, 
Yeah, so anyway, guys, if you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe to my channel. Um, thank you for my subscribers. I don't know, YouTube just be playing games with me or either I'm playing with them because I don't upload enough. But it's like I get little trickles of subscribers, but I need a whole downpour. Like, I, <laughs> I ain't even going to say I'm going to stop doing it no more. I'm not going to say I'm going to be consistent, but y'all, I give y'all some valuable information in these videos. So, oh, yeah, guys, and don't forget about my booklets. My nurse brain booklets that I have for sale on my <laughs> Etsy store. Cute, nice booklets, y'all. You can get one for the nurse graduate in your family. I got them for long-term care. I got them for, oh, excuse that noise, y'all. <laughs> these, these booklets here have been sitting here for a little while. I'm trying to find one for acute care. I got them for acute care. Nice booklets so you can wow. When I first made these booklets, or when I first, um, my friend first made them for me, Child, people was taking my pages out my book list and making copies of mine. I knew that was gonna happen, but anywho, get your nice wow your wow your peer. Um pull out one of these book lists and tell them you got them from Nurse Brain Creations. I'm on Etsy. I'll drop the link to my Etsy store. And I will be back with y'all with that that next video I was talking about. Cause I, I really want to put this out there for y'all to make y'all just that more of an efficient nurse and long-term care. Talk to you later. Bye.